Hi and welcome back to Free Radio Hub. As you know, we are covering a course on data integrity and security. And in one of our lectures, we covered Microsoft SQL Server. We learned how to install Microsoft SQL Server. If you want a complete tutorial on it, there is a video on our channel. You can watch that in order to learn how to install Microsoft SQL Server. Today we would learn how can we use Microsoft SQL Server using Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. If you'll see on your left hand side, we have databases here. Uh, some databases are there which are pre-installed by Microsoft itself. These databases usually handle the overall structure of the tables and rest of the information. If you want to create a new table in Microsoft SQL Server, you'll click on databases and then right click on it and select new database. Name it for example, students. And then if we'll maximize it, you can see some default settings of it. It's showing the path of it where it could be saved. It's entirely up to you. I'm going with the default settings. You can further check the options here about the database. If you need any specific settings, if you want to change the correlation level, for example, um, any other character set or the recovery mode, you can make the necessary changes here or if you want to add them to different file groups, you can click on this. We are going with the default settings, we'll simply OK and this table, this database for the students will be created. If you want to write a query yourself and you want to create a database using a query, you'll have to click on this thing for new query. Now here you'll write create database and then name of the database which is uh, student affairs and then simply click on execute as you can see we have student affairs and students over here if we'll expand it we'll be able to see different uh, views of the students table but if we we'll click on tables we don't have any tables at the moment so in order to create tables we will right click on the tables and we'll select new and we'll select table now as you know that every table has rows and columns so here we'll name the column name as uh, an id which is national id and then the next we can select is uh, student id and then we'll add another one uh, we can call it first name and then select the data type and then last name that's it now for national id we can select it as integer over here we can type it or we can select it from the list for the student id we can select integer here as well and uh, here we'll go and we'll select virtual 50 you can copy it and if it's the same uh, data type you can paste it over here now we can disable this allow nulls and if you want to create a primary key in any table you'll simply click over here and then right click and select set primary key so that's how you can select a primary key now once that's done you'll go to file and you'll save the table as uh, tbl underscore students and press ok now you'll be able to see the table under tables now if you want to make any modifications to it you can again go to the design view of it and you can manage the settings else if you want to see the contents of it you'll right click on it and you'll select top thousand rows for example just to see if there is any data inside and here you can see the query which is executing so that you can see the tables you can make modifications over here as well in order to see the contents of it if i want to enter the data in this table i'll right click on it and i'll select edit top 200 rows of the table and then i'll enter the details for example if i'll enter 1000 and then student id as 001 and we'll enter like ali muhammad and then the second one is we'll enter 1000 
10,001 and we'll enter the student ID 2 and then we'll enter Salman Ahmed and that's it. If you move to the next row, so now this data is saved. If you will close it and if you will try to open it again and see top thousand rows, you will be able to see the data which is saved on the database. Now in the same way, if you want to delete the, table, delete the data from the table, you will go to edit 2000 rows. You can either make modifications to it like this or you can simply right click on this one and delete the entry which is on your table press ok and that entry would be deleted from there now since we have these two databases we will learn how can we actually back up the databases on sql server so in order to back up the database on sql server you'll click on the database and then you'll go to tasks and you'll select an option as backup now once that's done it's asking you if you want to have a differential backup or the transaction log only we'll select full backup and here it's giving you an option that where you want to save it you can add it to any other different location or if you want to save it on the same pathway which is suggested by sql server you can select it you can even select the option that you want to back up to the disk or you want to back up to a remote location on an address so since we are storing it on the same computer we'll go with the default settings and press ok so now it has created the backup on the location that we have suggested now after the backup if you want to delete and restore the database you'll simply right click on it and you delete students for example and then if you want to restore the database, you'll right click on it and go to restore database. Then you'll select the device from here and you'll browse to the path of the database where you have stored it. So again, you have two options, either file or URL, you'll select file and then add. And then you'll go to the location where you backed up your student's database. As you can see that it's appearing on Microsoft SQL Server Backup. You'll click on students and press OK. And then you, as you can see, it has selected it. Press OK. And now you'll press OK to restore it. And as you can see here, students database appeared and it showed that the database has been restored successfully. So that's how we back up the databases and restore the databases. We'll try to understand that how can we set the policies or the security settings on the databases that we have on student affairs and students. So since it's related to the security of the database, we'll go to the security and then we'll click on logins. Now, just keep in mind that by default, uh, SA account would be there because that's the system administrator account through which we uh, create the uh, users and which has the top level access on the SQL Server. Now, there are two kinds of logins in SQL Server. One is on a server level and the other one is on the database level. So we'll have to create some accounts so that we want specific users to access the student affairs or students table so they will have their own set of permissions. In order to create new login accounts, you'll right click on it and select login. And since we are creating the account for the uh, databases like student affairs and students, we'll name it for example REG for registration office and we'll select the option as SQL authentication we'll give it a password and if you want you can enforce the policy for the expiration and other things but I'm just creating a simple user account and press OK now you can see this REG account appearing here now let's check the permissions on this REG account if we are able to make any changes with that. So in order to test that, click on connect and then select database engine and now provide the details for that. For example, Ridge and I'll provide the password and click connect. And now you are connected 
using the account REG. This account is connected with the admin account and this one is connected with REG. So now we'll go to the databases and if I try to open it, it would give me an error message that I cannot connect because it's not accessible. Same thing goes for the student's account. Now we'll have to provide the permissions on this REG account through which they'll be able to access the databases, which is student affairs and students. So in order to do that, we'll right click on the REG account, go to the properties, and here you can go to server role. Since it's a default role for it, we don't want to make any changes. He'll be the administrator for the account which we want to use these two databases like student affairs and students. And now here we can select the option as DB owner and we'll select the public as it is. So now he'll be the database administrator on these two databases for this one as well as this one and then we'll press OK. Now if we we'll try to check on this account again, we'll simply refresh it and you'll be able to notice that now he can open the databases which are for student affairs and students and even in students he can go to the tables right click on it and select the top thousand rows so he'll be able to see the data in that table as well you can close all these things again and for example if you want to remove this one from here you can simply disconnect it and if you want to connect it again you can simply write here write the name of the account you're trying to connect and you'll be able to connect to it so that was a very basic tutorial about basic utilization of sql server i hope you understood it that's it for today thank you very much